no one asked for this stream. I remember watching a documentary about um, Billy Mays, the late Billy Mays, uh, helping a guy um, patent and sell a piece of plastic that women could use to piss while standing up. Um, so with that being said, uh, welcome to, uh, a game. <laughs> welcome to a game, uh, that is completely free, so I said, fuck it. We're gonna do a stream on it. Uh, <laughs> um, welcome to a game called... Dear Esther, or Dear Esther, Dear East, Easther, Landmark Edition. Um, this is a game that exists. Uh, it's a walking sim, and I have decided we're, we're going to have a little piece of paper. We have a little thing here. I want to go ahead and pop that puppy up. Uh, you might be able to see it there. Uh... I believe that says, uh, let's see, hold on. I need to open up this, go to filters, and I need to do that. Think about that. Missing features. Uh, we can put whatever here. Just, uh, um, we, we're, ju we're just going to write missing features in Dear Esther. Um, so, we just have that there. Um, I fucked with the settings. I think everything might be fine. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna start with the lighthouse. Then we have the buoy, the caves, and the beacon. Uh, let me go ahead and turn that off. Okay. Welcome to Dear Esther. Dear Esther, the gulls do not land here anymore. I've noticed that this year they seem to shun the place. Maybe it's the depletion of the fishing stock driving them away. Perhaps it's me. When he first landed here, Donnelly wrote that the herds were sickly and their shepherds the lowest of the miserable classes that populate these Hebridean islands. 300 years later, even they have departed. Mm, yes, quite. Wait. Hold on. Wait, hold on. I cannot tell. Maybe it's just my like weary eyes here this is this is way too loud we're gonna fix this first of all ah, there we go uh apply uh audio excellent all right uh i'm gonna turn myself up apparently Wait a second. Is it using my right? Is it using the right microphone? Okay, it is. Okay, we're fine. Uh, okay, okay, we're good. It's just I need to turn this down a lot more than what I had before. Uh. Okay, cool. That should be a lot better. Okay. All right. Okay. Just wanted to fix the audio because I don't want it to be too overpowering, you know. Um I think that should be fine. Hopefully it's not too quiet. Um Looking at this There is no head bobbing. You fucked up. Uh, 
I was I was I was worried about this one. I was I was worried about that one because there was no options to turn it off or to even have it on at all. We've already found a missing feature. They fucked up on that one. Um, while we're at it, we'll also need to add no um, bad volume mixer. Wait, we need to confirm this. Is there a way to turn the music off? Let's confirm this. Audio. No. There's no way to turn the music off. It's everything. In one setting. That's bad. That's bad game design. Bad bad game design. That's a that's a bad one. Okay. Make sure to always have audio. Fucking up there already, Esther. Alright. Good job, Esther. I already fucked up on two things. Okay, so we have a flashlight on immediately. Um. Okay. God damn it, Esther. No flashlight model. You fucked up, Esther. You fucked up big time, Esther. Alright. So, what do we have here? Uh, we have some paint buckets. A boiler. Th are these paint buckets? Can I crouch? Uh, Esther. Esther, you're, you're already fucking- I can- I can zoom in though. Okay, we can zoom in. But, Esther, I'm gonna have to dock points on that. I'm gonna have to dock points, man. Sorry, sorry, Esther, but you fucked up. I'm judging you based off of the fact that this is free. Uh, let's see here. Ooh. You know, I played SCP Containment Breach, um, and it has a better control system. Uh, why? Okay, so the, I can't, I can't jump. No jumping. That's a bad, that's a bad game design, bad game design. Sorry, Esther. Really fucking up here. Fucked up. Alright. And, uh... Can't seem to, uh, to close the door. Hmm. Strange. Esther, what's with this random, um, cum on the floor? What's going on here? Esther. Esther. What the fuck? Alright, Esther. Really pissing me off now. Uh, Esther. And also... <laughs> why? Alright. Let's check this house then. Alright. Ooh! The fuck? What the fuck happened in this toilet? I've never seen a toilet look like this. Surprisingly, the bucket's clean here. It's kind of sad. The boiler. Did you know how dangerous these are? Boilers are so dangerous. I am surprised we they just had them in like places. Like they're just like, hey, we're just open now. You could cook on one of these. Yeah. <laughs> this reminds me of um. So far, the gameplay mechanics remind me of uh of PT. Uh, where's the fetus? No fetus, baby? Uh, okay. What do we have here? A document? Oh, oh, okay, so clicking on both buttons do the same thing. I see. Uh, let me check the controls. Oh, no. Esther. Esther. What the fuck? Okay, Esther. Um... Deck of playing cards, low poly uh, playing cards. Uh, why is the the deck of cards so low low poly? Why? What's going on here? Ooh. <sighs> what 
What the fuck? Esther! Oh my god. God damn it, Esther. Alright. God! Oh great, now we have to solve a puzzle? Or is this just laughing at me now? Ha 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 ha. What is this? Like, someone just came all over the place and then used their cum to draw this. To make fun of me. God damn it. See, this was a prank. I was pranked to come here. This is like the worst version of, like, Luigi's Mansion. Alright, let's see. Oh! Damn. Look at this view. To be fair... I'd live, I'd live, you know, you know, I'd, I'd live in a lighthouse, you know, I'd, I'd live, I'd live in a lighthouse. Alright, so that's it, huh? You, you just have these buildings? You can't even enter the lighthouse? Like, it, it, do I remember, do I recall that there is no way to enter said lighthouse in any capacity? Oh, we can look at it. Yeah, it's broken. Okay. So, at what point, at some point there was... The ability to climb up that via staircase, but now there is no way. It seems like um, a safety hazard. Interesting. Whoa. Sound design's good. Um, internally moving uh, foliage. Smoke coming from the water. Interesting. <laughs> I want to go up there. I guess it, this is like an exploration game, right? I'm down. I'm DTF. Down the fish. Uh, okay. Yeah, you know, Esther... <sighs> I'm going to deduct points on this one. You have to have a fishing mechanic. Every game has to have fishing. You have to understand this, Esther. <sighs> what is this? Well, I would like to be able to crouch and get a better view of this even more. In even more detail, but I can't even do that. I So I am left to assume that this is some kind of, like, thing to put fish in whenever you catch them. Meaning that's, that this game did, in fact, have... Wait, I can... I can go in the water? Why? Okay, that's cool, I guess. Yeah, there's more. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, oh. Ooh. So a way to go upstairs from here. When you were born, your mother told me a hush fell over the delivery room. A great red birthmark covered the left side of your face. No one knew what to say. Hmm. So you cried to fill the vacuum. I always admired you for that. But you cried to fill whatever vacuum you found. I began to manufacture vacuums just to enable you to deploy your talent. The birthmark faded by the time you were six and had gone completely by the time we met your fascination with the empty and its cure remained interesting compelling the story i want to see what's up there uh i'm curious so i want to go back even though i i'd assume that that walkway takes me to where i need to go i want to explore up upwards wow I'm really gonna, I'm really gonna grind this one out for, uh, eight hours. This is gonna be an eight-hour stream. Of me critiquing this entire game via, uh, notepad. Let's see. 
<laughs> oh, oh, there's no restrictions, huh? There's no restrictions. I can go all the way to this rock without any restriction. You know what? I give you props to that game. Usually walking simulators somehow bother to restrict you in some of the dumbest ways. And this one does not. I could probably go out into the ocean somehow. And just sit there and go forward for a little bit until the game stops me. This is a very nice path. Very nice indeed. Um. Oh no, Esther, Esther, baby, Esther. Oh my God, Esther. It's a bad game design. Whoa. How does this place have power? Wait, hold up. Can I climb up this? Ah, that's how you're gonna restrict me, huh? So there's some parts that have, like... Yeah, fuck you. I'm gonna just walk past it. I don't care. Donnelly reported the legend of the hermit. A holy man who sought solitude in its most pure form. Allegedly, he rode here from the mainland in a boat without a bottom, so all the creatures of the Come sea could rise at night to converse with him. How disappointed he must have been with their chatter. Perhaps now, when all that haunts the ocean is the rubbish dumped from the tankers, he'd find more peace. They say he threw his arms wide in a valley on the south hmm. side, and the cliff opened up to provide him shelter. They say he died of fever 116 years later. The shepherds left gifts for him at the mouth of the cave, but Donnelly records they never claimed to have seen him. I uh. have visited the cave and I have left my gifts, but like them, I appear to be an unworthy subject of his solitude. This reminds me of, this part right here reminds me of like the I Spy book, you know, like the treasure map one where you go to like the pirate island or whatever. Those, those like books always had like the, the PC game as well, always had like this really creepy, scary like feel to it that like something was off. I, I wonder if that was just me, but I should definitely play that, um, that I Spy game again. There was just something like, I felt like I was always like in danger when I was a kid in that in that game. I don't know what they did to it or what the fuck was going on. Oh. Oh no. So there was really almost no point other than Okay. Bro that brought back a, a memory. Memories I'm gonna see if there's a a secret cock Easter egg. In the rocks. There better be a cock easter egg. Alright. I read a review for this game and it sounded exactly like something Jim Sterling would write. But they probably bought this game. <laughs> That's right, baby. I got it for free. <laughs> I wonder how many hours I can sink into this one. Dude, I, I should get a, um... I should get... A drink of some kind. I have water, but... I should get, like, this feels like a game that I drink, like, a, a tea with, you know? Like, something very proper. You know? Oh shit, bruh. I wonder where those ro that rock section A wonderful goes. Sight. The moon cresting the junction between the cliff path and the stone circle. It cast a shadow of the ridge across the beach. All the world as if you had signed your name in untidy handwriting. Oh, okay. Thanks, Esther.
I'm kind of curious what happens down there. Now I now I want to go back. What am I missing? Probably more dialogue. Oh fuck. You know what? We got to go back. We got to go back. I wonder if you can die in this game. I don't want to chance it. I don't want to chance dying on Esther's Island. Damn. Look at these skills. Alright. So, I want to check over here. I'm curious. And then we'll head back up. Because it looks like that this is a dead end. And we're, we're going to get our, our money's worth out of this one. Alright. I can't be too judgmental because this game was free. So. <laughs> Let's see here. Whoa. What does it mean? Is this like a whale? The, with a tail? On the rail? Now I'm going to sail? So yeah, this is a whole different path. Well, now it makes me wonder if that this was the right way the entire time, and now I'm Dear going... Esther, I found myself to be as featureless as this ocean, as shallow and unoccupied as this bay. A listless wreck without identification. My rocks are these bones and a careful fence to keep the precipice at bay. Shot through me caves. My forehead a mount. This aerial will transmit into me so. All over exposed, the nervous system, where Donnelly's boots and yours and mine still trample. I will carry a torch for you. And I will leave it at the foot of my headstone. You will need it for the tunnels that carry me under. Bruh. Damn, bro. You good? Bro. Bro. You good? You okay? <laughs> bro. No comment on this random shape thing? I like fucking... I destroy this this thing. It's gone now. It's gone. In RP. I destroyed it. There's no evidence of whatever that sign meant. It was probably like a wizard put that there to s cast a spell. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> nice rock. I mean, I mean, rock. Well. I'm almost half expecting like a pirate ship to come crashing in here with a shit ton of pirates running at me. Like a bunch of asset store pirates from like Unity start running at me and then the mafia city guy comes and kills me okay we get it your wind no, shut up I, I i wish i could mute you no i i kind of like the wind because it makes sense dude ocean breeze is so nice I love the ocean breeze. It's just like a nice little, you know. It's that big tower up ahead. I wonder how long this game is. It seems like the there's like a nighttime part or something. This is the you know what this game is. This game is a a like a video game representation of like those. Those, like, paintings that, like, 
people have whenever they live in like a lake house of like a boat or like a lighthouse on like an island with like ocean you know exactly what i'm talking about this guy's like talking trying to talk over me fuck you i'm gonna talk over you you little bitch boy yeah that's right what are you gonna do fight me yeah I bet I could beat you in a 1v1. Yeah. I bet I could I bet I could destroy you in Phantom Forces, dude. Dude, I could destroy you in Phantom Forces, bro. You suck, dude. Keep any would-be rescuers at bay. The infection is not simply of the flesh. What the fuck are you talking about? The infection is not simply flesh. They were God-fearing people, those shepherds. Those shepherds. Is it like a race thing? Donnelly tells me that they had one Bible that was passed around in strict rotation. It was stolen by a visiting monk in 1776, two years before the island was abandoned altogether. In the interim, I wonder, did they assign chapter and verse to the stones and grasses, hmm. marking the geography with a superimposed significance that they could actually walk the Bible and inhabit its contradictions? <gasps> I don't know, but that's so valid, Umphi. That is so valid, Umphi. Um, yeah. Uh, can I get up here? Can I, uh, climb up this? I always like in video games whenever you see like a shit ton of grass on rock. It doesn't seem like <laughs> you just see like a grass patch just like on like a chunk of rock. And it's just like, yeah, we, we accept that as like a thing that happens in games. Oh, this grass is growing into the fuck. Like, I mean, like technically, yeah, but like there should be like detail or something. I don't know. I'm being picky. Um... Okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Dear Esther. Dear Esther. I met Paul. Oh, there's a boat. I made my own little pilgrimage. My Damascus, a small semi-detached on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. We drank coffee in his kitchen and tried to connect to one another. Although he knew I hadn't come in search of an apology, reason or retribution, he still spiraled in panic, thrown high and lucid by his own dented bonnet. Responsibility had made him old. Dented bonnet? Toho? Like us, he'd already passed beyond any conceivable boundary of life. <sighs> what is going on with the audio? Um. There's just something, like, homey and comforting about, like, a, like, lake house, like, scenery, like, decorations and all that stuff with, like, a nice ocean view. Um, a lot of, like, ocean, like, a anchor, you know, shit like that, right? Where it's, like, all, like, fish and ocean related with, like, a nice, nice kitchen. Just, I don't know. There's just that, that vibe that I enjoy greatly from shit like this. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know, like, a good example other than, like, trying to explain it by words. I feel like I'm going the wrong way, or, well, good. If I am going the wrong way, then good. But if I'm going the right way, then shit. Because that means I'm going to have to backtrack. Oh, whatever. I feel like, like, the cave would be somewhere that I need to go first. I've become convinced I'm not alone here. 
even though I'm equally sure it is simply a delusion brought upon by circumstance. I do not, for instance, remember where I found the candles, or why I took it upon myself to light such a strange pathway. Perhaps it is only for those who are bound to follow. There needs to be better um, camera, because this is not smooth. Uh, hmm. Just never mind. Hmm. Who uses um? Who uses like? I wonder if I if I lowered like the graphics. I wonder what this game would look like. Uh, how do I change the graphics? Oh, advanced. Here we go. Texture detail. Low. Anti-aliasing. Disabled. Wait for vertical sync. Disabled. Apply. Holy shit. You know this is the sad part? That somehow made it worse. I don't know how that's possible, but it somehow made it worse. Um, which I was not expecting. We're gonna make that eight times, and we're gonna make that enabled. Oh, fuck yeah. Whatever. Wait, there's a book here. I, I can't grab those. The, the, you can't grab these books. Like I said, you can't read them. That's pretty messed up. Can I use the, uh, no, I cannot. The arrow keys to control the camera proper walking sim games be like I wonder if it would play better with um a controller I just realized I don't have batteries in this oh my god you fucking idiot oh my god hold on plug in the controller let's see let's see how the camera feels whenever I use a uh, controller here okay repeat stuff repeat stuff repeat stuff repeat stuff repeat stuff I should use the fighting stick <laughs> that'll get shit done okay here we go I'm gonna use a controller. Go off, Umfi. Holy shit, that that feels way better. Wow. That feels so much better. And it also looks better too. Holy shit. Okay, so we're playing with a controller then. Uh, cause this shit needs we need to turn that sensitivity all the way down. Yeah, there we go. You have to make sure that there is what vibration? From what? From like the fucking whatever. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna use a controller. Nice. Yeah, this this plays so much better. Other than whenever I slowly, I don't know. They did not make that mouse and keyboard movement look that good. I'm gonna make a review, and it's gonna fucking have that kind of whoa, 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 whoa. I can fall down that. I am not doing that yet. Nope. We're going to the cave. We are backtracking. I don't care. Now with this new form of movement, I feel so free. I feel so... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I like how... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buttons are dedicated to zooming in the camera so i can hit whichever button i feel like to zoom in the camera if i feel like it this is amazing being able to do that easily no jump button 
so I can calm my ADHD. I could like go up here, right? Like how much can I go up on this mountain here? Okay. Not a lot. Got it. Um No water sound effects when walking in water. That's kind of um That's kind of cringe. Uh No walking water sound effects. Also, vibration? What in this game causes vibration? That's another thing I feel like games use, like, overuse sometimes, is the vibration. I don't think a lot of people even really care for it, and I don't think it adds that much immersion unless they're using it for any specific reason, like, per se, like, Metal Gear 2, where they actually utilize the vibration system in a more uh, meaningful way. I guess it depends. Some games can use it really well, and then others don't. They just use it whenever... I don't even think this game would use vibration. I don't know what action-packed adventure this game is awaiting or hiding on the surface level. I feel like the next game I need to play is uh, Soda Drinker Pro. I feel like that's going to be the next one. Also, I wanted to check out this uh, boat over here. But it looks like I'm not going to be able to. Just by how they designed it. Clearly. It's clearly showing that they will block you. Wide and the cliff opened out before me. Making this rough home. I transferred my belongings from the Bothy on the Mount. And tried to live here instead. Come. It was cold at night. And the sea lapped at the entrance at high tide. To climb the peak. I must first venture even deeper into the veins of the island. Where the signals are blocked altogether. Only then will I understand them. When I stand oh, on penis. The and they right there. Me. There's the penis. Uncorrupted. Knew it. Laughing. Yeah. So Esther, or whoever is the person, I don't know who's living here. Um, I don't know if the narrator is, is the character we're playing, or if Esther is the person... I, and I don't even know how we're getting these notes. Could be honest with you. Oh boy. Oh boy. Cool. Oh, and we get music. We got some lore that we missed. And we get music. Nice. Okay. Bruh. I'm like, ah, getting situated here. To be in a more comf comfortable, comfortable, comfortable position. game making me sleepy. This game making me feel a little funny. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Got Mortal Kombat 11. It's been pretty epic. I've been using, I've had a reason to use my fight stick. It's pretty epic. Whoa. Wow. 
Wow. Based. And I assume that's where the, uh... Where those, like, car thingy or whatever you call it thing. I guess that's where it is. I don't know. Oh. Wow. Okay. Cool. What a what a song. What a music. Finally, we can traverse. We can traverse into no man's land. Deeper into um Epst I Esther's Island. <gasps> Loading. Oh, we got the chat. Okay, that was a chapter. I have now driven the stretch of the M5 between Exeter and Bristol over 21 times. <laughs> what? reports and all the witnesses and have cross-referenced them within a millimeter using my ordnance survey maps. I simply cannot find the location. You'd think there would be marks to serve as some evidence. It's somewhere between the turn off for Sanford and the welcome brake services. But although I can always see it in my rear view mirror, I have as yet been unable to pull ashore. Hmm. <laughs> Here's the question, which way do I go? So let's let's give this an understanding like an understandable review of what they're trying to do. They're trying to tell an atmospheric story like story. Like the or well they're trying to tell a story through atmosphere. Um and yeah so like i guess it's supposed to leave leave you up for interpretation of what is exactly what is exactly about this whole island in particular but i guess we're to assume that esther owns the island or something and you were inherited the island of, of forever whatever reason and you come here searching for answers of what happened to Esther or maybe Esther is just a, your character's friend and you went to this island for some reason I don't know I haven't been paying attention to the story because he's just been saying a bunch of nonsense I would have loved to explore these like decrepit boats here like in detail but that would make the game more creepy and they don't want that like i always i always think crashed boats are always like on shores and stuff like that are always really creepy as well as like sunk sunk in like crates and shit like into water there's just there something like how else could new hermits have arrived New hermits. What what do you mean by hermits? Right there? There they are using their cum again. That's it, huh? That's what we get from this? Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. Except we went if we went that way then. That probably takes us somewhere. So we need to go back up and check that area. Because that probably goes some nowhere as well. And this this is the path that they want you to take to continue. I want to see what's over there. Had kidney stones and you visited me in the hospital. After the operation, when I was still half submerged in anesthetic, your outline and your speech both blurred. Bruh. The stones have grown into an island. Is this Carl Pinkerton? Escape, and you have been rendered opaque by the car of a drunk. <laughs> okay. Again, this is like dialogue that is trying to be deep, but I I don't know what like 
why it's trying to be as cryptic as possible. Like, why do you have to talk like that, dude? Just be like, hey, dude, I thought it was pretty sick that you were, you visited me in the hospital. Um, I'm sorry that I am an alcoholic. And uh, I caused myself to get a kidney stone. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> sorry, I don't drink enough water. Uh, I made a huge mistake, and I'll try not to make that mistake again. It's like the Canadian version of uh, Dear Esther. Okay. I should go grab a tea. Okay, so is this literally just a path back? Like, this is just a path down to there? Or what's the deal here? That's it. Hold on. Okay. We got that written down. I'm I'm still kind of disappointed. There's no skill trees or uh, quest lines. It's really hoping that uh, we would get some kind of quest line, like a delivery system, or like you can deliver packages um, from one place to another. There should be a game about that. An imagined answer phone message. The tires are flat. The wheel spins loosely. I think it's called um. Like ink over this map. I think it's the shut the fuck up. The coastline mute, compromised. Where you saw galaxies, I saw only bruises cut into the cliff by my lack of sobriety. Wow. Yeah, I think it's called American Truck Simulator. Anyways, okay, so we we went all the way over and up and over that and doing all that stuff. Do si do and do do do. Wow. Look at that ship. If only I could explore it. I want to actually explore it. God damn it. It annoys me that you can't. That's frustrating. They restrict you in some of like the weirdest ways. Let's see here. Yo, dude. I don't know what that is. Like, they'll put, like, an invisible wall in a place that you don't expect. Oh, shit. I can actually approach this. Dude, that's terrifying. I hate the noise. I hate the noise of, like, a settling ship like that. Uh. Ah, uh, that gives me anxiety. Uh. Oh, dude, that gives me anxiety. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, nope. Not. Nope. Not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm getting away from this decrepit, rusted, rusting thing. That's the whole ship, too. Look at it. Like, that's part of it, I think, right? Yeah, that's, this is part of the ship, too. Ooh. Can I get in there? No. Damn it. That would be so terrifying. Uh, if you ever see pictures of, like, going into, like, wrecked ships that are now... That you can actually, um, go into. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That shit's freaky. That is so... Like, ugh. Terrifying. Scary. Spooky. Spooky, scary skeletons. Shivers down your spine. I don't know which way we need to go, but I'm gonna assume we go up. Let's check out this, um, path here. That will surely take us to the exact same area. Oh fuck! Paul saw through his windscreen. 
not Lot's wife. Oh, you can you can fall down that. Scar in the hillside, falling away to black forever. Oh, you can fall down that. They would not. They're not going to stop you. That's very clear that they will not stop you. Oh, I don't like that. But that's sick though. Holy shit. Like this is fucked. Right here. Oh my god. Dude, nope. 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 Nopers. Hello? Hello? Okay, so yeah, this is just a different path. They both led to about the same thing, but one was more interesting. So this is a Skyrim. I've begun to climb. Away from the sea and towards the center. It is a straight line to the summit, where the evening begins to coil around the aerial and squeeze the signals into early silence. The Bothy squats against the mount to avoid the gaze of the aerial. I too will creep under the island like an animal and approach it from the northern shore. Cool, okay. I'll stop being cinematic now. Whoa, wow, flashlight. Gives you flashlights in the most... Wait. Whoa. Yo, go off, Umfi. Um, yeah, they give you, like, flashlights in the most obscure places, but not, like, a dark-ass cave. That doesn't make any sense. Mm. But I wanted to take that path. There we go. The Fine, I'll take this path. Originally in the early 1700s. By then, shepherding had formalized into a career. Hmm. The first habitual shepherd was a man called Jacobson from a lineage of migratory Scandinavians. He was not considered a man of breeding by the mainlanders. Dude, can you stop LARPing? He came here every summer whilst building the Bothy, hoping eventually that becoming a man of property would secure him a wife and a lineage. Donnelly records that it did. Based. He caught some disease from his malcontented goats and died two years after completing it. No one to carve white lines into the cliff for him either. Damn. Well, okay, cool. Not really. Not epic. Hello. God damn it, again with the fucking cum walls. What the hell? What does that say? Bossed bail notice someone got bailed out but why why is there no game theory on this game why is there no game theory on this game this seems like the perfect story mm. There's the penis again. And another penis. I swear to God. Ooh. When the oil lamps ran out, I didn't pick up a torch, but used the moonlight to read by. When I've pulled the last shreds of sense from it, I will throw Donnelly's book from the cliffs and perhaps myself with it. Maybe it will wash back up through the caves and erupt from the spring when the rain comes, making its return to the hermit's cave. Perhaps it will be back on the table when I wake. I think I may have thrown it into the sea several times before. Hmm. What the hell? That's a big water bottle. 
Yeah, look at these, uh... Items. Interesting. Well, well, well. There's the oil lamp that we cannot grab or do anything with. We can stare at it, at least. And also, there's the music sheet notes for the soundtrack to this game. They couldn't find the soundtrack. Huh. What are you? Ugh. Dude, I am so tired. I got, like, I got very little sleep last night. So, forgive me. Um, I'm probably gonna... Like I, sh I said, like I said, I should probably go get like a tea or something. Hopefully that'll wake me up a little bit. So, hold on. I'll give you a nice view as I go. I'll get a drink real quick. Give me one second. I will only take like a, like a minute, or so. I'm back. Alright. <clears throat> Got my drinky. Wow, this game lets you... Wait. This game lets you walk with the D-pad. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna play with one hand. Oh god. Shit, I just spilt that on me don't get it on the god damn it I got a little bit on on the robe this is this is really hard to do with one hand hold on wait if I use like just my fingers and I aim it yeah there we go there we go Okay. What to make of Donnelly, the Lordnum and the Syphilis? It is clearly not how he began, but I've been unable to discover if the former was a result of his visiting the island or the force that drove him here. For the Syphilis, a drunk driver smashing his insides into a pulp as he stumbled these paths, I can only offer my empathy. We're all victims of our age. My disease is the internal combustion engine and the hmm. cheap fermentation of yeast. Okay. That's a uh, very specific, but you know, go off, I guess. Oh my god, you are so extremely valid and worth. Oh my god. They found Jakobsen in early spring. The thaw had only just come. Even though he'd been dead nearly 7 months, 
His body had been frozen right down to the nerves and had not even begun to What the to fuck? Decompose. What the All fuck? Him, small flowers were reaching for the weak sun. The goats had adjusted happily to life without a shepherd and were grazing freely about the valley. Donnelly reports they hurled the body in fear and disgust down the shaft. That I cannot corroborate this story. Whoa. Um. An urn? And someone's ashes going off into the distance? Okay. By the way, again, you can swim. But I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, wow. Um, I just wanted to mention, like, <laughs> he was like, he's he was like one step closer to being like, you know, like that Mario creepy pasta, or it's like the victim one eyeballs were removed meme, like that that uh, copy pasta spam. That shit. <laughs> That's that's that was like on what level that was. That was just a little bit too hardcore. His body was ripped in half um, by a sickle. Rib cage open and clearly visible. You could see his heart beating and pounding at the cage, uh, compulsing and and <laughs> repulsing. I don't know. The apparition of the dis of the destruction of the <laughs> I don't know. just like shit like that. This is a another crashed ship. I don't know why so many people are crashing their ships on this island. Um, I feel like we're on like Skull Island at this point. There's like this is this is definitely a cursed island. If that many people are crashing into this place. Climbing down to the caves, I slipped and fell and have injured my leg. I think the femur is broken. It is clearly infected. The skin has turned a bright, tight pink. And what? Pain is Holy shit! The waves. Winter tides against my shoreline, drowning out the ache of my stones. I struggled back to the bothy to rest, but it has become clear that there is only one way this is likely to end. The medical supplies I looted from the trawler have suddenly found their purpose. <laughs> they keep me for my final ascent. He's fucking dead. <laughs> that music, like, wow. That music and shit, like... <laughs> that shit was actually really well made. That made that, that, like, I actually felt like a fucking, like, nervous for a minute there. That was, that was crazy. Like this, this could probably definitely be a horror, horror game, just by how um it's trying. It's like <laughs> peaceful, but then it just throws shit like my femur broke, it ripped in half, and then he describes like the fucking like he just describes how it looks, <laughs> like. As he's like sitting there in pain, he's just writing this really calmly. As my femur broke, I, I, I felt great pain, and it was it turned pinkish purplish. It's just like, <laughs> shouldn't you be sc screaming in pain? Unless you was being chased by a monster and your adrenaline kicked in. Oh, they want me to go down here. Okay, bye. Donnelly did not pass through the caves. From here on in, his guidance, unreliable as it is, is gone from me. I understand now that it is between the two of us, and whatever correspondence can be drawn from the wet rocks. Femur breaker. Grab your flashlight, idiot. Oh, it's broken. 
we don't have a flashlight anymore. But luckily, there's a, a very convenient, never, um, never died down candles, uh, that, uh, light up this place, uh, very well. Uh, and, of course, the blue aura of, um, this wonderful, luxurious, uh, crystal rock, um, somehow illuminating this cave, naturally. Yeah, that, this, this doesn't make sense, game. Why is there just a blue light source here? At least the water looks cool. Against the wall. Oh, here's the cum goblin. Is he crouching? Okay. My internet is dying right now. Hold on. Are we good? I think we're fine. Okay. I'm going to wait until we're completely good just to make sure. <laughs> um... It's like going between orange and green. Okay. I think we're fine. Okay. We're good. Okay. Whoa. This reminds me of like the icebergs that you'd eat, like you take it off of the uh There's no other direction. No other exit from this motorway. Speeding past this junction, I saw you waiting at the roadside for one last drink in your trembled hands. Based. Based. More come. Wow. Atmospheric storytelling. I don't know what story it's trying to tell or convey, but epic. Nice. All right, well, back up we go. Good job, game, on that. I didn't even know there's a path right next to my left. I could have skipped that section if I wanted to. Um, I guess we go down to the depths below. Nice. I'd chill here. This would be a good, uh, like, like a swimming pool like thing. There needs to be more like, um, swimming pool places that are kind of like, they have like nat natural ish looking rock with like waterfall shit going on. Oh man. I love that stuff. Like, this looks like such a fun, like, water slide. Minus, like, the pain. Like, if we got, like, a kayak or something and rode down this shit, this would be pretty sick. Like, getting, like, a cool fucking, like, plastic kayak or something, ride down this fucking shit, <laughs> crash right into the water. That would be sick. It would be scary, but sick at the same time. There was, like, that video where, like, someone was, like, sliding down, like, this, like, very small, like, there was, like, a very little water, and they slid it down all the way into, like, a lake or a river or something. It looked really cool. Um, it looks like that's probably the way we need to go. Yeah. Wow. 
Look at all these chickens. God? <laughs> Hello? Whoa, this would be very dangerous, actually. But then again... Like, you just slide back down into that water, so you're pretty much safe. It would just mean that you'd have to backtrack a bunch. This would- I- I bet there's some pretty fucking, like, fucked up people who would actually dive into that. I don't even think that thing's that deep. Ed, or at least deep enough for you to be able to do something like that. I don't know. I'm surprised that thing hasn't filled up with water yet. Unless that stream is somehow going somewhere else. I don't know where it would be going. Oh my god. Someone had like a, an orgy here. Look at these glowing mushrooms that are definitely like you could definitely see these in real life. It looks like we're looking at, like, a small, like, we're, like, a giant, and we're looking at a smaller version of, like, a mushroom biome. Like, really tiny. And it's, like, heavily detailed. <clears throat> he seems to run faster in this section than normal. I am traveling through my own body. Following there you the go. Of infection from the shattered femur towards the heart, I swallow fistfuls of painkillers to stay lucid. In my delirium, I see the twin lights of the moon and the aerial shining to me through the rocks. Yeah, yeah, I agree. This place does not seem to be lit properly. Interesting. Uh, let's go exploring. Tee excuse me, tee The buoy. How many chapters are there in this game? shit can drag you. Nice. Someone coded that in. Someone went out of their way to code in the ability for this water's current to actually drag you. Look at all these leeches. They look like leeches. Yeah. I don't even know what is that supposed to be like a, a rock, but like the texture is stretched out. These are like this is like a weird like texture that they like stretched out. And there's supposed to be pictures of rocks on it, and I they never like bothered to make these like actually rocks. They're just like a flat 2D image, and they look like they're kind of 3D from like a certain angle. But in reality, it's all just a lie. It's a setup. It's a setup. Look at that. Oh, man. Don't you love, like, those tiny white pixels, like, flashing at your eyes? I love wet. Wet graphics. Damn. This place is shinier than, like, a... Than, uh, than a diamond. Bruh. Bro. 
sad anime gif. Bro. Pop team epic sad anime girl gif picture. Dot PNG. Dot JPEG. How? Where's that coming from, Gim? Down... Where, where's that coming from? All the way from down there? Really? You think that? Fucking idiot. Okay, what the fuck is this? Is that supposed to be, like, barnacles? What is... Like, is, is this, like, the spikes from, like... <laughs> from Mario? What the hell is this? Wow. The hand you offered to me. How and deep is this water? Into this well, into the dark waters where the small flowers creep for the sun. Yeah, that the is deep. Are reflected in your retinas, moonlit in the shadow of I the think. Victorian chimney. By the look of it, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty that's pretty deep water actually. That is um very deep water. That is not a reflection of that. That is not what that is. That is actually how deep the water is. Um. Fairly deep. Unless it's like an illusion somehow. But I doubt it. If it. Like usually. Uh, what the fuck? Oh I got an achievement. Yeah it's just. Wow. I, I'd assume that if it was a shorter. Amount of water. It wouldn't dip like that. Um, and you could actually somewhat see it a little bit better. But I think the deeper it is, the more it's uh, it reflects. Because it's darker. Unless I'm just fucking sounding like an actual nutcase right now. Behold! Tobuscus Games? Oh god. Tobuscus Games. Oh shit. We're gonna have to head back too. That's the sad part. Yep, we gotta head back. This is this is like a main path. You can tell because there's plot. Look at all the penises on the wall and the cum stains everywhere. I'm going to be making that joke every single time until it's not funny. And it probably was funny one time. That one time when I made the joke at the beginning. That was when it was funny. I am not getting in that water because that is terrifying. Look at that. It's a fucking butterfly looking thing. Hold on. <coughs> what is this? So, I'm assuming that's water, and those are mountains. I don't know. Back with, like, the glowy, like, Mario spikes. This is a dead end. Yes. Okay, so we came back for no reason. Got it. You know... Ironically, 50% of people who have this game actually went to the buoy chapter. They finished that chapter. 31% of people have gotten 5,000 steps, which means that they've just booked it to exactly where they need to go because they're speedrunning this game. You know what I say about that? How about you take your time? You get what you pay for, all right? I'm getting my money's worth. This game used to be, I think, $10 or something. Became free. <laughs> there is lore here. Away from being a city. Okay. What the fuck? 
Those are like octopus tentacles or like duck penises being hung on the ceiling. This actually does look like a duck penis. This reminds me of like the time I like did like I, I shot like a shit ton of silly spring uh string. I had like a um um like a Spider Man web slinger and we just sprayed like a shit ton of like silly string all over the roof of my um of my parents' bedroom. They probably fucking hated me after that. Me and my sister were fucking around. And we did that. They got so mad, probably. Because they, they left us, I think they left us alone for a little bit. And when they came back home, they just saw, like, a completely just... <laughs> like a horror scene, because they had to clean that shit. Damn. Damn, bitch, you live like this? Nice. Okay, so you can actually, depending on how you aim it, is how you swim. Okay. I get the controls now. Ooh. No, fuck. I made a mistake. This is terrifying. This is, uh... This is fucking terrifying. Oh. Um. What? Was I supposed to do that? Because I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to go around it. But, you know what? Fuck it. Whatever. That was a mistake that I did not want to make. Okay. Well then. Oops. Hey, there it is. That's the winning shot right there. The moon. So much to debate. Did he paint these stones or did I? Who left the pots in the hut by the jetty? Who formed the museum under the sea? Who fell silently to his death into the frozen waters? Who erected this godforsaken aerial in the first place? Did this whole island rise to the surface of my stomach, forcing the gulls to take flight? I don't know, man. All right. Cool. Wow. Wow, we look at the, how big the moon is. That seems very unrealistic. Um that is terrifying. Why is the moon so ginormous? Why is this moon so big? Why are you big? Why are you big? Dead languages and electrical diagrams 
and hide them away for future theologians to muse and mumble over. We will send a letter to Esther Donnelly and demand her answer. We will mix the paint with ashes and tarmac and the glow from our infections. We will paint a moon over the Sanford Junction and blue lights falling like stars along the hard shoulder. Why are those, like, candles there? How are they not unlit? This is one of those things where, like, you find, like, little tiny, like, sea creatures hiding out. Right? I forget what you call them. But I don't think those candles would be lit anymore. Or even there at all, in general. Like, these are, like, everlasting candles that should not exist still. From here, I can see my armada. Jammers. I collected all the letters I'd Pe ever meant to send to you. People if dance. I've ever made it to the mainland, but had instead collected at the bottom of my rucksack, and I spread them out along the lost beach. Then I took each and every one, and I folded them into boats. I folded you into the creases, and then, as the sun was setting, I set the fleet to sail. Shattered into 21 pieces, I consigned you to the Atlantic. And I sat here until I'd watched all of you sink. Interesting. Why are you being such a little bitch boy? Like, seriously, dude. Like, you're such a fucking angsty little bitch boy teen. Like, wh what? I'm half expecting this game to take, like, a huge, gigantic fucking turn and we're suddenly in Silent Hill. Or, like, <laughs> we're gonna see a dead body of the guy who's writing these. On a sudden... Look at these little eggs. Crush them. I fucking... Crush those. Okay, bye. These things are always, always weirded me out. With how they're designed. Yep, okay, 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 okay. Yep, okay, I'm back in the truck up. Okay, 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 stop. Alright. You know, like, how much effort that you have to go through to put, like, a boat that you have in the water using one of those things is just actually just... Oof. Yeah, there's nothing here. This is a uh, dead end. Oh, actually, no, never mind. Again, the game tricked me. The game... Fooled me into thinking that was it, and then you turn around and bam, another entrance. This reminds me of that one game that um recently came out. I forgot the name of it, but like, um, it's like a game where you're also on like this island and they're like wine cellars or something. Very similar to kind of like what this game kind of was, but actually had like some a a little bit more gameplay going on in that it's a horror game and you're being chased down by shit, but. I don't, I don't, I think it was also a puzzle game, but I could be wrong. Yeah, there was a lot going on in that game. I don't know. I don't remember the name of it, though. Sadly. I guess we are eventually getting to that tower there. For a few minutes as I struggled up the cliff path. I swallowed another handful of painkillers and now I feel almost lucid. The island around me has retreated to a hazed distance, whilst the moon appears to have descended into my palm to guide me. I can see a thick black line of infection reaching for my heart from the waistband of my trousers. Through the fugue, it's all whirled like the path I have cut from the lowlands towards the aerial. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, buddy. Now it's time for a long descent, or ascent, to the, um, radio tower that's on. Uh, 
I've begun my voyage in a paper boat without a bottom. I will fly to the moon in it. I've been folded along a crease in time, a weakness in the sheet of life. Now you've settled uh. on the opposite side of the paper to me. Uh. You can see your traces in the ink that soaks through the fiber, the pulped vegetation. When we become waterlogged and the cage disintegrates, we will intermingle. When this paper aeroplane leaves the cliff edge and carves parallel vapor trails in the dark, we will come together. Okay. Oh, there's the creepy music. If only Donnelly had experienced this, he would have realized he was his own shoreline, as am I. Just as I am becoming this island, so he became Whoa. syphilis, retreating into the burning synapses, the stones Red. of infection. Okay. <laughs> Wow, cool game. That was sick, dude. Wow. That was, uh... That was, uh, pretty epic, dude. Wow. <laughs> Stars! There are headlights reflected in these retinas. Too long in the tunnels of my island without a bottom. Whoa, what is this? Have risen to the surface, but the, the fuck is this? Is this supposed to be like a street lamp? I've become fixed. Open There's the uh and I turn moon. Itself. I've become an infected leg whose tracking lines form a perfect map of the junctions of the M5. I will take the exit at mid thigh and plummet to my Esther. To my Esther. Is Esther like a girl? Or a boy. Oh, this is a good view. There it is. Hold on. There we go. Check that out. That'd be a good live wallpaper. I would actually have this as a live wallpaper. Very beautiful. Hmm. 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 Die, witch! And then, like, a fucking wizard comes out of nowhere and fucking shoots you with lightning. Yay, we get to go. What does that sign say? It says... Unauthorized personnel keep out. Extreme danger. Could die. You could die. It's dangerous. You know, ironically, this is more safe than the fucking... Than what I've been walking on currently. To even get here. Like, this is more safe than that shit. Oh, that's a lovely view as well. Oh my god. Look at this shit. Wow. Wow. This is probably an even better- This is an even better view than the last one. Holy shit. That's beautiful. Look at that. Oh, wait. I see the penis right there. There's the penis. Easter egg. Yep. Knew it. I knew there was going to be one. Eventually. It's right there. <laughs> Thanks. I love the, like, little wind effects. That's cool. with panic 
Deaf with the roar of the cage traffic, heart stopped on the road to Damascus. Paul sat at the roadside, hunched up like a gull, like a bloody gull. Like a bloody gull. And as doomed as a syphilitic cartographer, a dying goat herd, an infected leg, a kidney stone, blocking the traffic bound for Sanford and Exeter. He was not drunk, Esther. He was not drunk at all. All his roads and his tunnels and his paths led inevitably to this moment of impact. This is not a recorded natural condition. He should not be sat there with his chemicals and his circuit diagrams. He should not be sat there at all. Wow. Yeah, so we're going up this mountain here, it seems. Very lovely mountain. Very dangerous with, like... Well, actually, this is still somehow safer than what we've done so far. Way safer, in fact. I feel bad for, like, the blind people who can't see stuff like this. Because it does look pretty. Although I would assume that, like, the real-life thing would be way prettier. Actually, this is kind of scary, if anything. Is this supposed to be rain? Then, yeah, even though it isn't, it's like wind or like water. Like, I don't know. It's like wind and water mixed together or something. I, I don't. They're making this random radio tower more the terrifying. The trails in the air. White lines etched into these rocks. Hmm. I just got a uh, achievement that says trigger all voiceover points. my belongings, my books, this death certificate. Mine will be written all across this island. Who was Jacobson? Who remembers him? Donnelly has written of him, but who was Donnelly? Who remembers him? I have painted, carved, hewn, scored into this space all that I could draw from him. There will be another to these shores to remember me. I will rise from the ocean like an island without bottom, come together like a stone, become an aerial, a beacon, that they will not forget you. We have always been drawn here. One day the gulls will return and nest in our bones and our history. I will look to my left and see Esther Donnelly flying beside me. I will look to my right and see Paul Jacobson flying beside me. They will leave white lines carved into the air to reach the mainland, where help will be sent. Okay. Why? <laughs> Is he gonna make it? Dude, wait, this guy's actually, like, he's like a badass, right? He, he, he's trying to do, like, a stunt where he jumps into the water? This guy falls really slow. What? <laughs> what? I'm a bird. I'm a bird. Yo. But we're not done yet. If this is not- if this is the end, we're, we ain't done, alright? There is still a couple more achievements we need to obtain. And we will have unlocked every achievement in this game. We will have 100% completed this game. Yeah, we're a bird now. We just watched uh, our character killed himself. Um, and now we have become a bird. Okay. Come back. <laughs> Come back.
There it is. For the Chinese room. There's all the developers. No music. Just silence. Well then. Mr. Game. Um... I don't know if there is a true ending to this. Uh, I don't know if, um... I don't know, like, what I'm supposed to take from this. Chinese room devs. Um... What can I say about Dear Esther? Uh, it is a game that is trying to be poetic, um, but fails unless you have about an IQ of five. Um, or lower. I, I just... The atmosphere is nice. Um, I gotta give them credit with that. It feels like the developers, if this was made by one person, um, they had a vision, right? Like, the, the people had a vision, and the only thing I can really think of... This was made by Unity? Damn. Damn. Yeah, um, the only thing I can think of is their vision was... Um, I, to make like an atmospheric game and they didn't exactly want, know how to tie anything into it to make it somewhat worth our time. Um, I want to hear the director's commentary. <laughs> I want to hear the director's commentary for this shit. All right. First of all. We gotta add more to this. We gotta add- we gotta add something else to this. It's not seven hours long. I fucked up. I want to hear the director's commentary for this shit. I, I need to know. Give me this fucking director's commentary right now. Hello everyone, um, I'm Dan Pinchbeck. I'm the creative director of The Chinese Room and this is the Dear Esther developer's commentary. Hi, I'm Rob Briscoe. I'm the artist on Dear Esther. And I'm Jessica Curry, and I was the composer on the game. So what you're looking at today is a remake of a remake of a mod. Um, Duresta started off in 2007 as a Half-Life 2 mod um, that did really, really well in the modding community, which was fantastic, and as a result of that attracted the attention of Rob, who worked as the primary developer on a Source remake of the game that was released in 2012. Hmm. And this year is another remake where the, it's been updated for a cross-platform release. <coughs> and we wanted to add in this developer's commentary just to give you a bit more of an insight into some of the ideas behind the game as it came together. Hmm. Interesting. Let's take, let's take a listen to this one. I'm very curious on what they were trying to go for. So you'll see around you in a lot of the environments, there's, there's a lot of detail ingrained into everything. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do with Dear Esther is uh, bring the visuals up to the same kind of level of detail that Dan and Jess had put into the other areas of the game. So um, all of the history and the kind of hidden pieces of story that uh, intertwined with the VOs and the music and stuff, I, I kind of wanted to bring some of that into the environments. Uh, so if you look around you, you'll see that there's a lot of interesting bits and pieces, a piece of paper with someone's name on it, uh, a photograph, uh, an ultrasound. Explain the toilet. Bits and pieces 
I kind of layered in to just kind of bring another explain the toilet the right now story, uh, into the game and also someone had really bad randomized. diarrhea so every time you play you'll see something different lying around and this is just to build on this idea that everybody has a unique experience and a wait, unique what? Uh, interpretation of the story. wait 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 it's randomly generated wait wait hold the fuck on how is this how can you make random fucking shit thrown into an area randomly generated so see around you in a lot of yeah yeah explain this shit again a lot of detail ingrained into everything. there was a book here remember uh, one of the things that i wanted to do with <laughs> dear esther is uh bring the visuals up to the same kind of level of detail that dan just <laughs> put into the other areas of the game so hold on um all of the history and the <laughs> hidden pieces of story that are intertwined with the VOs and the music and stuff. I, I kind of wanted to bring some of that into the environments. Uh, so if you look around you, you see that there's a lot of interesting bits and pieces, a piece of paper with someone's name on it, uh, a photograph. Uh, Those did not change. All of these little bits and pieces are kind of laid in to just kind of bring another aspect of the story uh, into the game and also they're actually randomized so every time you play you'll see something different lying around and this is just to build on this idea that everybody has a unique experience and a unique uh, interpretation of the story <laughs> they fucking randomized the random shit on the ground Oh, no, no, the cum is still here, though. I'm sorry, but that's the one thing I get that's consistent. They consistently made sure that the cum on the floor is always there. Um, they really wanted to tell that story. Holy shit. Hold on. We gotta, we gotta look at the locked achievements. Um, okay, so uncover urns. So there's urns and trigger all director's commentary, which we're working on. There's 59 and there's two hidden achievements remaining after that. So we need to find the urns. And we need to um, trigger all the director's cuts. Hopefully whenever we do the director's cut portion, we'll get the uh, the urns as well. If that's even possible. I'm curious. Where would these wacky urns be hidden? You'd have to really explore the game to find these hidden urns. Is it worth it? <laughs> probably, probably not. I gotta know the lore. I gotta know what the urns mean. Tell me. Part of the point about the whole game, I think, was this idea that rather than having a linear, straight through version of the story, that we could have multiple story units for each place you were. And I was really interested in this idea of how you can open up that space that people can interpret. So I loved the idea that you could have two people that had played this game and then would uh, have a conversation about it. And one of them would say, oh, what did you think about when this happened? And the other person would be like, well, that didn't happen for me. I had a completely different event happen or a completely different story happen. And it kind of feels very gamey in that way that actually one of the things I love about writing for games is that you hand over so much control to the player that it becomes their story and that's really, really important rather than trying to force them. So using randomised uh, blocks of voiceover in the game and the kind of randomised prop details that Rob was talking about means that it gives it a really different feeling every time you go through. And that was really, that's kind of interesting for me because I like the idea of going, well... Not everyone has to have the same experience, and because it's interactive, you have the capacity to have very different experiences occupying the same space. So yeah, but balancing all that then becomes a an absolute nightmare. I think it's nice though, because everybody gets a personal experience. Like I love reading the forums and seeing how people come uh, come and they sort of tell their story and what they interpreted of it, and then you see other people discussing what they thought of it. And to me, it's kind of nice because everybody else, every everybody takes something unique away from it. <laughs> so the story I got in my in my playthrough, the story I got was a guy of some some dude bitching and complaining about like a girl that he misses named 
Esther Dolan or whatever the fuck, and he was sitting there bitching and complaining about random shit. Um, and then he hurts his ankle, uh, and now he's going, he's like traveling up and through the place and dying. And he's just, he's become addicted to painkillers. I, I, I don't, and then he, I don't fucking know. <laughs> What's my story? <laughs> What the fuck was my story? <laughs> when I wrote the music for the mod of Dear Esther, there was absolutely no budget whatsoever for uh, live players, so all the music was sampled. But one of the good things about that is it actually forced me to be quite creative about how I wrote the music. So with my background in sound art, I wanted to use samples in a different way that wasn't just um, using it to sound like a violin. I wanted to time stretch and manipulate samples to make something different and strange and quite unique. Um, but then when we got the Indie Fund money, I had the amazing opportunity to re-record the music with live players. And that was so exciting for me actually, because that's where it comes to life. And I thought long and hard about whether to write new music, um, going from the mod uh, to the commercial version, but actually I decided that my initial and original emotional response to the game was probably going to be the strongest response and reaction that I had. So I just literally, the music that I'd written for samples... Every rock and every texture is randomized for a different experience. ...is transformative. Um, <laughs> have these awful samples soaring away and then you have the string quartet playing this very bleak very sparse music and they bring the presence of the island immediately to it and it comes to life and that's the exciting thing about it, it wasn't a huge budget but just having that experience of working with the players was just magical really now everything about esther for me is a dream the, the landscape is not an island, it's the dream of an island. The music is like music that you you wake up because you've heard in your sleep, but you can, you're not conscious of hearing it. And the language in the story was supposed to be like that as well. If it didn't matter the sense it made, it was more about the, the kind of, the shapes it created, if that makes sense. So that the words would kind of, were like a, like, like being in water, like listening to something underwater would be this, this very dreamlike kind symbolic poetic thing and it always had frustrated me in games with game writing this has really changed quite a lot there's never any space for poetic languages very exposition-y very descriptive very direct and you'd have like art and audio would have these amazing creative spaces they could explore but when it came down to actually writing you just had to basically go into the room describe the character tell the player what to do and it just seemed like the most boring thing you could do with words in a game and why couldn't a writer have the same artistic freedom as a visual artist or an audio designer or a, or a musician in terms of being able to say, isn't this just about creating this this kind of emotional tone, this emotional space? Um, and it's really, I, I still love that about the game. It's one of the things I love so much about Nigel's voiceover is it has this really odd, disconnected, kind of dreamlike quality to it where you might finish the game and not actually understand anything that happened but you'd have been carried along in the flow of it. Um, and without any kind of sarcasm at all, I get into trouble saying things like this. The same design principle applies as this to Halo. It's 30 seconds of fun, or 30 seconds of, of depressing engagement, I guess, in our case. But it is about that loop of being in the moment in the game constantly, and that's actually the critical thing that matters. Interesting. Compelling. This symbol on the beach, um, which is the uh, golden ratio, is... Ratio? It's one of the only things that's, that's really left explicitly from the mod. In the original mod, there was an awful lot of um, more kind of symbols and uh, kind of a much more kind of mystical, sort of magical element to the island. There was a lot of very weird stuff in there. And a lot of them came out of the commercial version because they felt like they were a little bit explicit. And instead, there's a lot more hidden kind of codes and symbols in there. 
there's still some some stuff which you can only actually see or experience if you are not playing the game if you're looking at it from editor um, we had in the original mods things like trees planted to mirror um, the shape of the M5 or there's a whole there's a whole bunch of things that are there to okay. represent star clusters and all kinds of things like that and we'll probably talk a bit more about kind of like hidden details and, and the secrets in the game as we go through but that was really interesting for us in terms of the design of it of going you've got your kind of your conscious explicit play experience but games are always constantly manipulating your mood and your feelings and the decisions you're making and so really trying to create a space that had all of these kind of subliminals in it was a really interesting thing that we wanted to do both with the original and then I think it got lifted up into a much more sophisticated version when we went to the commercial because Rob was able to bring that sort of <laughs> level of artistry to the visuals that really got that kind of uh, sense of hidden meaning in there and that was really important given how kind of complex and symbol heavy and poetic the story is where a lot of it doesn't again doesn't actually make any sense but it's about kind of leaving you with these I guess like the half-life of ideas and thoughts that you can't quite shake that stay with you. So we really were trying to get that blend of, of how music, uh, story and visuals could all create that really sort of uncanny structure that you wouldn't necessarily be able to define properly, but you knew it, it kind of had a meaning that was staying with you. <laughs> so the thing that changed here is uh, now they're wheels instead of like that brass, like fucking whatever you call it. Um, like the the part where like the wheels go on to what is this? So something I wanted to do as an artist um, was create uh, some kind of reward for the player when they explore the island There are some areas of the game where it's a little bit more quieter. There's there's no music or there's no voiceovers So I kind of wanted to create a bit of an incentive uh, for people to explore and you'll find around the island that these these kind of like uh, random uh, scattered items that, that are usually slightly out of place from the environment themselves, but in in another aspect, they actually bring a little bit of uh, story um, to the island itself. Usually to the island or to the to the actual uh, protagonists or, or you know the characters that surround it. Um, so you'll find that around the island these these little props and stuff. Uh, just keep your eye out for it if you're exploring. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know what a, uh, a tires are supposed to represent in the story of Dear Esther. Um I I I it has no meaning at all. Um or anything and uh, like it <laughs> So that's why the um Dear Esther's set on a Hebridean island. What's really interesting about this is one of those times when your kind of aspirations as an artist and the practical realities kind of dovetail. We knew that we had to have some way of limiting the player from disappearing off the play space. And when we made the original, it was a mod, and because it was a Half-Life 2 mod, you kind of had Eastern European city, spaceship, or blasted, desolate landscape. I'm, I think I missed something over there. making any other assets. So it started off with these practical constraints. We don't want to set it on a spaceship. We don't want to set it in an Eastern European city, so it's got to be on this kind of like this desolate landscape. And we want to limit the player, so an island seems like a natural choice. And mm. it's really interesting how you start from that. I mm. mean, this big mm. lump of clay on mm -hmm. the table, mm -hmm. carving out mm -hmm. paths and things to so annoy the mm -hmm. cleaners mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And Jess and I were talking, and Jess started making sort of snippets of music to kind of go in there. And then all of a sudden, we just went, oh, that's the story. Oh, that's what happened here. But it really started, I think, from the place. And when we started looking at photographs of, of, of Bore, we started going and reading some of the history behind it. Suddenly that was it. And it just was really, really naturally became, this is the place, this is what happened here, this is how it feels. And then everything else kind of coalesced around that. Um, yeah, I think as an artist it made my job a lot easier because those islands are so kind of like, the, the, the environment is kind of hostile. You're out there in the, the, the Hebrides. Uh, you've got this kind of like inclement weather, you've got cold, rain, snow, it's it's a very kind of, uh, it can be a very uh, depressing place to be at times, but it's also at the same time very beautiful. And it's it's this kind of like stark, bare landscape uh, but has, that has this beautiful surroundings. So it's, in terms of art, I think it really helped 
me uh, to, to portray a lot of the, the themes in Dear Esther. Um, and there was a natural fit with the music as well. It, it, yeah. it suggested a musical style, which was really... This is the... <laughs> This is the kind of game that you put on on your TV when you're like about to go to bed and you want to find something that's just boring enough to where it'll just make you go like pass out immediately. Yeah, I don't think there's anything over here. Um, surprisingly, I thought there would be something up here, which is why I walked all the way over here. Um, but yeah, sadly, there's not anything in this section. Just kind of weird. Like, I, I was expecting something to be here. And then we have that one that we need to run into. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, there might be something in here. Look at that. And there is nothing. Unless it's hiding for some reason. Nope. Yeah, there's nothing in this section, and... I don't remember. That's the cave. That's the uh, the weird cave thing. They put a lot of thought into making these random, like, developer messages uh, of basically them saying the same thing over and over again, but they've somehow elongated it and made it so you have to listen to all of them if you want to get an achievement. Which I am completely willing to do to stretch out the time of the stream. Because, <clears throat> wow. Wowie. Mommy, mommy, mommy milkers. Who sent me? Hold on. Someone sent me a friend request. Or not? What the fuck? What the hell? Okay. Do not start this one. Okay, whatever. Fuck it. I'm gonna end up actually starting this one again. I'm just gonna have to listen to it for a couple seconds. Unless it's just a one time thing. I guess now is the chance to find out. So people have asked why the um, Dear Esther's set Shit. on Hebridean Island. What's really interesting about this is it's one of those times when your kind of aspirations as an artist and the practical realities kind of dovetail. We knew that we had to have some way of limiting the player from disappearing off the play space. And when we made the original, it was a modern, because it was a Half-Life 2 mod, you kind of had Eastern European city, spaceship, or blasted, desolate landscape. We had three options if you didn't want to start making any other assets. So it started off with these practical constraints. If we don't want to set it on a spaceship, we don't... There we One go. One of the things you're always trying to do as a composer is create memorable themes. And... Uh, a slight confession is that the probably the most memorable theme, which is uh, Remember in Dear Esther, wasn't actually created for the game. Um, <laughs> Rob's um, looking shot. <laughs> <laughs> so it was actually from um, a piece of choral music that I'd written years uh, before, uh, based on a Christina Rossetti poem called Remember. And one of the things I was talking about earlier was how I didn't have any budget. So I had this piece of choral music and I thought, hang on, this is absolutely perfect for Esther, but I don't want to use all of it. So the only bit that you actually get in the game is the first line of the choral piece of music. But that actually went on to form the main theme of the music that I wrote. And I think for me, it's really interesting about how things that you've written earlier, years before, sometimes come in really, really useful and fit. So. I always tell people and students not to despair if something doesn't get used or doesn't work at the time, because actually there'll come a place or in a time where you think, hang on a minute, I've got something that fits. So in terms of that memorable theme, the remember theme gets used in multi multitude of different ways during the game. And one of the things it does is helps you to identify the kind of psychic place that you're in in the game. Um, so the theme is played in lots of different ways and actually you'll notice that as you go through the game it becomes more and more broken and more and more manipulated and broken down as the player goes through the journey and as you're psychologically struggling to get to the end point in the game. So music's really, really useful for highlighting the psychological mood and 
we talk a lot about psychogeography, which sound, always sounds a bit, oh, um, bit pretentious, <laughs> but actually I think it's really important to what the three of us <laughs> did in this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that maybe what sort of talk. like <laughs> the idea about psychogeography is you're not in. The place you're in is not the place you're in. Or you create the place you're in. It's not just as you're here Why and the landscapes out this? there, but you don't navigate like a city by street signs and by those kind of formal things. You navigate it by the things which are significant to you and the people who lived in that space. And I think that was really kind of key to. I think it's really central to how the union of art and story and music come together in Dear Esther, because it's not a place where you're going right, we have to leave the play uh, up here because it's a natural <laughs> formation and then you would naturally have a piece of music here because you come oh around the corner. God. But the story, music and art all work around the idea of what's going on in the narrator's head at this point. How do we represent his emotional state relative Look. to this landscape? And again, it's that idea of the game is, it's a dream of a place. It's like a, the idea of it being a fever dream or a coma dream, which obviously ties in a lot with the kind of story and we'll come back to it in a lot more detail when we get to the caves a bit later on. Wow. Um, what the fuck am I doing? <clears throat> I'm sitting here listening to fucking Dear Esther commentary, director's commentary <laughs> for, <laughs> for a game that doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> this game doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Oh my god. This shit's fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, fuck this, dude. <laughs> uh. Alright, I think we have, um, I think we have a good list here of, uh, of shit. So, here's some missing things in Dear Esther, and if they had these, I think the game would improve. Um, no head bobbing. Bad volume mixer. No flashlight model. No Tarkov level of body movement. No jumping. No closed slash open door mechanics. Come. Can't read books. No fishing mechanics with random loot and fish to catch. Can't leave footprints. Grass on rock. No walk button. Walking and water sound effects are missing. Um, no quest lines. No skill trees. No rule 34 secrets. Not seven hours long. And um, no character customization. These are the things that are missing from our game, and uh, they need to bring them back. Or, well, not even bring them back, just actually uh, add them to the game. And then I will consider it. Maybe it's uh, it'll be worth uh, playing. Um, wow. Um, if you're, like, fucking, for some reason, interested in any of that, um, it's free to play. <laughs> go play it and then go get like every director's cut thing in there. I I do not want to do that. Um, no siree. I am I I am not interested in um listening to fifty how many how much are, are in there? How many? Fifty nine? There's about 50 other pieces of dialogue left, and they're fucking, they can be really, really long. Like, wow. They, um, they were very, very, very passionate about this project. Um, I am completely just surprised by that. Um, I am completely surprised by that. Um, because that is crazy to me. Um, to think, like, they cared about what they made, and, uh, wow. Wow. It is, um, it is actually just 
um, it's baffling uh, to why they cared so much about it. They really did have an idea or some kind of reasoning behind making it. Um, application is not responding. I guess close it. Hold up. Let's try it again. DirectX 12. Let's try it. see if it if it uh, opens or whatever here but yeah um, sometimes art some of the best art goes completely unnoticed or is um, rejected and I guess uh, Dear Esther is one of those games. It's an art piece that is not understood. Um, and it's only the developers who are the only people who really understand what they were going for. What their passion was. Um, we're going to do customize. Or we're going we're gonna to do something real quick because I'm bored. Real quick. And um, we're just going to do this. I don't know what the point of this is, but I guess I'm going to do this. Um, so this is the crypt. And uh, we're just going to open up random chests that I see and exp explore the crypt until I run out of money. And then we're going to move on. All right, and then I'm going to end the stream. This is just a random ending segment um, while I talk about the game that I just played. Um, yeah, it's just it's crazy to me. Uh, like, how much time that was put into that uh, and... It only seems like the people who made it were the only people who really cared uh, about what they were doing. Let's go ahead and open this. Wow, cool. Epic, dude. I got random shit. I don't know how this whole system works at all. Cool. Cool. By the way, it's just always this laggy with this, uh, with the crypt mode or something. It's just always this bad. There we go. For five coins, it was worth it. Um. Maybe if I played in, like, I don't know, not in borderless mode. Oh, 5,000. Thanks. Thanks, game. I can use that money to buy it, to open shit. I got, um, Cabal and Heart tokens. Epic. It, really? Really? There you go. Took you long enough. Can I take this out of their body or no? Hello, bird. I just killed that bird for five tokens. Worth it? Question mark? Cute win fail. Nice. I love the lag. It's probably because I'm trying to stream the game. My computer's probably dying right now. Uh, which is probably why I'm gonna... How much is my computer dying right now? Let me check. Holy shit, yeah. Okay, it's dying. Got it. Okay, we're we're not gonna we're gonna stop streaming this. <laughs> I'm killing my computer doing this. I am leg legitimately literally killing my computer doing this right now, so I'm gonna stop as soon as possible. Bye bye. Yeah, I I was literally killing my computer. Uh, that was fucked. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, little computer. I'm sorry. I need a more powerful computer. 
to run that game. Unless I lowered the graphics. I should definitely do that, honestly. Just lower the graphics, even though it automatically configured my settings for me. I should just lower it even more than before. Just lower that shit. Anyways, okay, you got to see, like, a very tiny amount of gameplay from that. So, hope you enjoyed that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I... I, I have not, nothing much to really say about about uh I, I have nothing I can really say about um what I just played other than it was it, it was an experience and it was fun to joke about it and um I guess that's all I can really say um that's all I can really say about it I guess um So, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I need to fix this. <laughs> Hope you have a good morning, good day, good afternoon, and a good night. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Probably on Friday. <laughs>